This week I painted a black cockatoo and I want to show you specifically how I painted the eye and the beak. As you know I paint a lot of birds and two elements that I find are really important to get right are the beaks and the eyes. I try to always get the eyes and the beak correct because that's where the personality of the bird lies and we tend to recognize a lot of birds through the shape of their beaks. I must get the shape of the beak correct and I need to get the size of the eye correct as well. If I get those things wrong then the whole painting doesn't work. So today I want to focus on how I painted the beak and the eye of this black cockatoo. So I'll start with the eye and I want to share a bit of footage with you of a place that we visited up north a few years ago. When we were on holiday in far north Queensland a few years ago, we visited a bird sanctuary in Cairns and they had this big walk-in aviary with some beautiful birds flying around everywhere. I loved it and I could have stayed there all day. They told me before I went in to take off my earrings because the birds will be attracted to them and they'll have a nibble on them and pull them out of my ear. They had some red-tailed black cockatoos there and I was able to get a couple of photos of them. I used this one here for my painting. It's not a great photo but it had what I needed for this painting. I started painting the eye by painting a wash of burnt sienna over the top. There's a little white highlight on the eye in the top left corner. I've put some masking fluid on there so that I don't disturb that area. You can see that little white dot of masking fluid that I've got there now. So that needs to dry before I move on. So once that's dry, I re-wet it with a layer of water over the top of the entire eye. I'm going to use sepia now. I'll wipe my brush over the pigment so that I can get the colour really dark. And then while that paper's wet, I put the sepia around the outside edge of the eye. Now I want that colour to bleed in from the outer edge in towards the pupil. So that's why I've put the water there. Now I've just taken the paint out of my brush. I want to use it to move the paint around that I've got there. I've got enough paint there, I don't think I need any more at this stage. So I can use the brush to push the paint where I want it. So I've left the burnt sienna showing in the middle part of the eye. When that layer of paint dries, I paint another layer of burnt sienna over the top to boost the colour. And when all of that's dry, I use my waterproof black ink pen to draw in the pupil. Sometimes I find this easier than using a brush. I can get a nice round shape to it that way. I've taken the masking fluid off that little highlight and I've got a bit more burnt sienna on my brush that I'm painting on now. I was able to tidy up the shape of the highlight because it wasn't round like I wanted it to be. So this is another layer of burnt sienna. I dried that off. Now I'm using some lamp black and I'm going to paint it around the outside edge of the eye. So the paper's dry now. I've got to be really careful when I do this. So I hold my brush right up on its tip so that it's perpendicular to the paper. This is a Prismacolor coloured pencil. It's called Parma Violet. I'm going to put a bit of colour just behind the highlight here. 
I don't always do this, but sometimes I like to use a little bit of coloured pencil on the eyes. I'm going to get a lighter pencil. This one here is called Grade Lavender, and I just want a touch of that on there as well. Now I need to work on that area of skin that surrounds the eye. So I'm going to start doing this on damp paper. So I want a bit of water there. I've got a smaller liner brush now. And this colour that I'm painting on is a mix of Windsor Violet and Neutral Tint by Windsor & Newton. And I'm painting that on to get some darker areas in that skin that's around there. And I want soft paint edges, so that's why I put the water on the paper. Here behind the eye, though, it looks like the paper's not quite wet enough. I'll use my other brush now. It's slightly damp with water and I can soften away that paint edge. Then I can keep going around with that colour. I'm putting the paint mainly where my pencil lines are. I'll use my bigger brush just to smooth out the paint if it doesn't go on quite the way I want it to. I'm not painting it exactly as I see it because there's so much going on on the reference photo. I'm using the reference photo just to guide me. Then when the paper's dry, I come back over with my liner brush and a darker mix of that paint. And I paint over the top of my pencil lines. The colour I'm using is Windsor Violet mixed with the neutral tint. I'll add a few extra lines as well. Now I want to show you how I painted the beak, but before I do, I'd like to thank Skillshare for sponsoring this video. I've been working with Skillshare now for a couple of years, and I've published 11 watercolour classes with them. Skillshare is an online learning platform where you can join other creative people and learn lots of new skills. There are thousands of classes on there and there's lots of different topics, not just painting and watercolour. You might be interested in photography or making videos or maybe you want to learn how to draw better or learn how to crochet. There's something for everyone and it's affordable. It's less than $10 US a month for a yearly subscription. So it's a good investment in your time. I'm enjoying this class by Gemma O'Brien called Illustrated Lettering, Drawing Intricate Floral Forms. Gemma is an Australian illustrator from Sydney and she's taking me step by step through the process of photographing botanical elements and arranging them in Photoshop on top of hand-drawn letters. Then she demonstrates how to ink them in and create these beautiful illustrated letters. I'm excited to try because I'm thinking that I could ink them in like that and then add some watercolour elements over the top. So if you're a creative person like me, you'll love Skillshare. I've included a link at the top of the description of this video. The first 1,000 subscribers to use the link will get a two-month free trial of premium membership. Okay, back to this bird. I want to step back to the start of the painting before I painted in the eye. I painted a background splash on and I put that background splash on top of the beak. So I'll show you that and then I'll jump ahead to where I started to paint the beak. I'm going back to the start of the painting again, like I said. That's the splash that I put on the background, and I've carried that 
over the top of the beak. That's a mix of Windsor Violet and Neutral Tint. I just wanted to show you that before I started painting the detail in. So to begin painting the beak, I paint a layer of Windsor Violet over the top. I also masked off some highlights just here down at the bottom of the beak and there's a line of masking fluid along the edge of the sear here. Now I've got the darker colour on my brush. This is the mix of Windsor Violet and Neutral Tint. I'm painting that on while the Windsor Violet's damp. I won't put it everywhere, I'll just put it in a few places where I see it's a bit darker on the reference photo. I've also left some of that very first wash when I did the background. It's still showing through in places. So I don't follow the reference photo exactly as I see it, I use it as a guide. I make sure I get the shape of the beak right, that's more important than anything else. I let it dry a little bit, it's still damp but not as damp as it was. And I'm dropping some water in now to create some watercolour blooms which will create some texture on the beak. When that's dry, I re-wet it with some water because I want to bring some darker colour over the top again. So here on my brush I've got the neutral tint on its own, so there's no violet mixed with it. I wanted the water on the paper there so that that would give me soft paint edges. The paint bleeds into the water and it creates those soft fuzzy edges. Slightly darker here on the reference photo, so I'll put a bit of that colour here as well. Then I start to create some directional lines with my brush. Paper's damp where I'm working. Up here on the beak, I'm using neutral tint on its own. Here I've wet the paper and I'm dotting the paint on. I don't want it to completely cover over that wash that I've got underneath. I want to see some of that lighter colour showing through. I've got the water on the paper so that the paint will spread and flare out and give me those soft fuzzy edges. When I've got that first layer on there, it's still damp. I come back with some darker colour, but I won't put this everywhere. I'm going to run it along the edge where the feathers are. I'll fill in the nostril now with some of that neutral tint. I paint that on dry paper. I'll leave some lighter paper showing around the outside edge. I can see some tiny little shadows on the beak cast from some of the finer feathers. So I'm using Windsor Violet to paint them on the dry paper. I thought I'd like to include those. So all I've got to do is make sure I get a bit of a wiggle on them and make sure they're not too uniform. Now I can paint in that cast shadow that's at the top of the beak. That's got hard edges on it, so I can paint that on dry paper. I'm using Windsor Violet to paint that in. Now I can rub away the masking fluid that's there. 
There's also a shadow on the C here, so I'll use the neutral tint to paint that on. And I paint that on the dry paper as well because it's got hard edges. I don't need to paint it on the damp paper. It's a bit hard to see what's going on there on the reference photo, so I've just got to try and do whatever I think there. It's hard to make out what the beak's doing there. I'll keep going with this shadow along here and that joins up with the shadow that's on the front of the beak, the purple shadow that I just painted. I've got to put some colour over the line that I had there where the masking fluid was because that's in shadow as well. So now I fill in the bottom beak with the Windsor Violet. I end up getting the shape of the beak wrong here, so I had to make some adjustments later on in the painting. I've made it a bit too pointy just here, so later on when I get towards the end of the painting I notice that and then I fix that area up. That layer of paint has dried and I've got some of the mix of paint now, so Windsor Violet mixed with neutral tint. I'm painting on that darker area that I see at the front of the beak. I'm going to put some of that colour along the edge where the feathers are as well. Now I've got the neutral tint again. I'm darkening up the inside area where the tongue is. Here I'm working on dry paper. So that's the darker area underneath the tongue. Now I need to let that dry and paint the tongue itself in. Here I've decided to paint in that shadow that's on the feathers there near the beak. This is the mix of neutral tint and Windsor Violet, but it's quite dark. It's got quite a bit of pigment mixed into it. Pull it back down over that area because I felt it wasn't dark enough. Here on the tongue I've got that same mix of paint but it's got more water mixed into it so it's not as dark. This is the tongue that I'm painting on. The tongue also has a shadow along its top edge so when this layer of paint dries I'll paint that shadow in. That's dry now, you can see it's dried quite a bit lighter than what it was when it was wet. And I'm painting that shadow over the top. Still using the same colour but it's got a bit more pigment mixed into it. And then I come back and I deepen some of these little feather shadows that are on there with some more Windsor Violet. I add a few more as well. Just going back to my eye again, I'm using an eradicator brush to rub off a few highlights. So I use the brush slightly wet and I use a tissue to dab at it and that creates a few highlights on that area. And then after a few more hours this is what it looked like. Painting birds isn't just about painting the feathers. Taking your time and getting the shape of the beaks and the eyes is just as important, if not more important, than getting the feathers right. Hopefully this video was helpful to you. Please give it a like and subscribe because I keep myself very busy making watercolour tutorials like this one every week. Have a fabulous week and take care. This week I painted a black cockatoo.
to the start of the painting before I painted in the eye. I painted a background splash on the background. Of course I painted a background splash on the background. Where else would you paint a background splash? I'm enjoying this class by Gemma O'Brien. It's called Illustrated Lettering, Drawing Intricate Follow, follow Forms. Intricate Follow Forms. I'm excited to try because I'm thinking that I could ink them in like that and then add some watercolour bits. I'm excited to try because I'm thinking that I could ink them in like that and then add some watercolour elements. Yep. I'm excited to try because I'm thinking that I could ink them in with any two nose at the top of the description of this video the first 1000 subscribers subscribers Skillshare is an online learning platform where you can learn Pressure.